In this tutorial, you will learn the basic concepts of genetic design and the use of Clotho tools to simplify such experiments. First, let me explain cells. Three types of molecules, DNA, RNA, and proteins, dictate the behavior of a cell. RNAs are long strands composed of linked ribonucleotides named A for adenine, U for uracil, C for cytosine, and G for guanine. DNAs are double-stranded molecules made of units very similar to RNAs. The two strands of the DNA are complementary in the sense that an A is juxtaposed with a T and a C is always across from a G. The genome of a cell is a very large DNA molecule around 4 million units long for a typical bacterium and billions of units long for more complex organisms. Proteins are composed of 20 different units called amino acids. Here you see a protein with the sequence M, G, D, E, F, K, K, R, S. The central dogma of modern biology relates the genetic code stored in DNA molecules to the functional behavior of a cell. DNA molecules are duplicated with high fidelity by biomolecules within the cell in a process called replication. RNAs and DNAs differ by only one kind of base. DNAs use T and RNAs use U. Because the molecules are so similar, a DNA sequence can be trivially copied from a DNA molecule to an RNA molecule. Within the cell, subsequences of the larger genomic DNAs called genes are copied as RNA molecules called mRNAs in a process called transcription. The mRNA sequence is the template for construction of protein during translation. The genetic code for converting the mRNA sequence to the protein sequence is a simple lookup table in which each amino acid of the protein is encoded by consecutive triplets of DNA or RNA code. Proteins have many diverse functions including the biosynthesis of all the metabolites within the cell. The units that make up DNA, RNA, and protein are themselves metabolites produced by the action of proteins. Because all this complex behavior begins with the sequence of bases present in the DNA, changing the genomic DNA sequence of the cell enables engineers to change most of the behavior of a cell. Synthetic biology is about rewriting the DNA code in an organism to change its behavior. Suppose you wanted to make green glowing bacteria. You know that this can be achieved by encoding the green fluorescent protein, GFP, in a DNA and stably replicating that DNA within an E. coli cell. Using either gene synthesis or cloning methods, you would obtain the sequence for GFP, represented by the red arrow, and join it with another DNA that included a selectable marker and origin of replication. Using proteins that alter DNA molecules, the two molecules are joined into one and then introduced into a cell. Once that plasma DNA enters the cell, the ensemble of proteins present in the cell begin reading the DNA through the process of replication followed by transcription and translation. As a result, protein functions encoded in the plasmid become expressed and phenotypic consequences are observed. Thus, there are two decisions you must make about a genetic engineering experiment. First, you must decide what genes you wish to put together and thus the design of the composition of the engineered cell. Subsequently, you must fabricate a DNA with that sequence and insert it into a bacterium. In these tutorials, we will begin with the second part of that question. We will explain the basic concepts behind a recombinant DNA experiment and tools for implementing such designs.